and welcome to session four of Getting Started with Perception ePower. I'm Krista Tweed, an Applications Engineer with HBK. In this session, we're going to look at the different ways that you can record data with Perception, as well as talk through the tools in the control panel of the ePower suite. So let's start with the control panel. At the top, you see the experiment name. Every time you press record in Perception, a PNRF file is recorded or is created, and we call that the experiment file. It has the extension .pnrf. The file is named with a base name and then has a number after it. We never allow you to overwrite data files. We will always just increase the number to the first available. So you can see now if I say I want to start with recording file 1, Perception automatically increases that to 10 because files 1 to 9 already exist. If you want to see where that file is being created, if you click the setup button here, the storage location by default is the C instrument recordings folder. If you wish to select a different folder on your PC, just click the button and select the folder or create the folder that you want to use for storing your files. If your mainframe has an internal solid state disk, an internal drive, when you click this drop down, in addition to PC, you will also see a mainframe option. And if you select that mainframe option, then your data files, your PNRF files will be created on the mainframe itself rather than on your Perception PC. This area of the control panel lets you very easily see what's going on with the system. If I put the system in preview mode, Perception tells me preview is active. This button is grayed out, showing you very clearly that that's the mode I'm in, and these other buttons are available for me to select. The sample rate is the sample rate used, in this case, in the ePower group. So right now, that's the only modules I have in my mainframe. In some other situations, you might have additional time-based groups. But you can set the sample rate. That is a simultaneous sample across all channels of the mainframe. Our power modules can support up to two mega samples per second per channel across all the channels. In this case, I just selected to choose to record at 500 kilosamples a second. We'll come back to the different ways that we can record data, but let's look at the other options that are in this control panel. We spoke about the optional analysis button in session two. For the generic settings button, there's just a few preference type things. Some automation systems have issues with Greek characters, so you have an option to remove those Greek characters if you want them. Um, just selections that allow you to, to change your preferences. Colored meters, you can see in the background, if I unselect colored meters, these go to just blue and white, whereas with colored meters, different parameters have different colors in the header there, making it, in my opinion, a little easier to tell what's what but some people don't like all those bright colors in their display. Important one, transducer selection. We saw in session one that through the control setup panel, you use perception sensor database to assign a sensor to the current and torque and speed channels to tell perception how to interpret that data. When you have the selection made from data sheet, then you'll have a single entry for sensors for all three of your phases of, of current and voltage. If you make the selection from calibration certificate, then the assumption is that you're pulling data off a dedicated calibration certificate that's tied to a specific sensor. And therefore, if I close this and go to my inverter setup, now I'm going to see three separate current transducer entries in my setup. 
The other thing that happens by making that selection is that perception expects each of those entries to be a unique sensor in the sensor database, meaning that a checkbox is marked in the sensor database that this is a unique sensor, and those are the only sensors perception is going to show you in that list. So I will move mine back to from data sheet. Filter usage, we default to combined. What that means is that we're allowing you to set a single filter setting for both your current and your voltage channels on your three phase measurements. If you change that to separate, then you can set those filters individually. We generally don't recommend that because when you filter signals, you're introducing a phase shift. So that's going to shift how your, your voltage and current are in relation to each other if you use different filters. But there are some te test situations that require it. And the final item in the bottom relates to if you're doing a set point map. And we discussed that in the video related to creating a set point map setup. Most of the other buttons I think we've touched on already, the create results allows you to automatically create new sheets for whichever component is automatically, is, is currently active. The zero shunt button here, if I click it, my system goes into preview pause mode and I have the option of zeroing my current and torque channels and speed channels. So if you have, uh, most torque sensors do need to be zeroed right before your, your measurement starts. If you also have current sensors that you need to remove that zero, just make sure you don't have anything actively going into the channels. I would not do it right now because I do have signals applied, but you'd make sure that sensor was sitting there with not actively measuring a current, Perception will look at the amount of signal that it's currently measuring. You say zero now, and it's going to digitally remove that from the channel. If I put my system back in preview mode and I click the copy button, then what Perception's doing is just grabbing a screenshot of the current situation on there. That means I can go over and paste that into Word or or some other document if I just wanted to grab a quick, quick picture of, hey, that's interesting, what is that? The other item is freeze. If I click freeze, it just freezes with whatever information is on the screen. Click defrost, and now the screen is back to updating and in live mode. Again, a way for you to maybe capture something real quick if you freeze and then copy. All right, so let's talk about the different ways that perception can save data. Click that setup button. That brings me to the full acquisition setup dialog. By default, we put the system in the mode of doing what I call a continuous acquisition. So when I hit re start of data recording, it immediately starts recording data and it's re going to record everything until I stop. You see that in the graphic up at the top with the solid blue line. That just means it's continuous data, I'm recording everything. Now perception also gives you the ability to decide what information you save in your PNRF file, in your experiment file. The ePower group is our raw data. That's the data that's coming into those raw channels. If I don't want that included in my PNRF file, I click the storage button, and now you can see the dashed line tells me that ePower group data is not being saved. Add the check mark back, and I'm back to my solid blue line. In addition to our raw data, we also have all of our calculated results. And there's two different types of data that come out of the real-time formula database. One are what we call synchronous data, meaning the results like multiplying a voltage time a, times a current. Those have the same number of samples as our analog channels. 
So we'll call them synchronous or sample-based results. And then we also have our cycle-based results. We call those asynchronous because we only have one result per cycle. The cycle-based results are always included in the PNRF file. They are not going to increase the size of your data file very much. Um, and so they're always included. But you do have the option to decide whether or not those synchronous, those sample-based results are included or not. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to close this. I'm going to start a recording. And when I go to input signals, just like what we saw in sample three, session three, now I have data in the review window. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. I'm going to auto scale using the star button at the bottom of the display. And now I can see there's my start of recording. Here's my end of recording. And I've got data, everything in between. Now, a slight variation that we can do on that is to say, I want to actually wait. And let's have two seconds of pre-trigger and three seconds of post-trigger. Now, what the graphic at the top is showing me is that all that's going to be saved is my five seconds, my pre-trigger and post-trigger. So when I start an acquisition, I start the recording, Perception's going to fill up a five-second buffer, and then it's first in and first out. The oldest data goes out as new data comes in. And Perception keeps that five-second buffer, and whenever either a trigger is received or I stop the acquisition, only that five seconds of data is what's included in the file. So let's see what that looks like. If I now start a recording, and I'm going to let it run for about 10 seconds here so that I have more than five seconds worth of data. And now I stop it. Now I can see, here's my start of recording mark. You can see I did run for about a full what, 13 seconds to the end of the recording, 12.8. But instead of having all 13 seconds, I only have that five seconds that I requested. So I have some users that say, you know, I don't want a big, huge data file. I'm going to tell it when to stop, and I really only want to see data, you know, five, 10, maybe a minute around that. And so that's an easy way to do it without having to keep your eye on the clock. Now the other type of acquisition that we do, I would call a triggered sweeps acquisition, meaning I'm not going to record data con continuously. I'm only going to record a snapshot of data when I receive a trigger signal. So our graphic shows us this, that when I start an acquisition, data is not being saved. When I receive a trigger, and I'm going to change this to zero pre-trigger and one second of post-trigger, every time I receive a trigger, I want to re record one second worth of data. The times when this is used most often is if you're doing an efficiency map type acquisition. So in that case, you typically don't care what happens with your system as you're moving between your set points, your different torque and speed set points. But you just want to say, OK, my system is stable. I want to know how everything's operating right now. So then your automation system sends a trigger to perception that can come in as a digital trigger or as a software trigger over CAN bus. There's a variety of options. Um, and perception, when it sees that trigger, will record one second of data. And then it goes back into monitoring mode and waits until it sees another trigger. It can do that indefinitely if this checkbox is not active. If you mark the checkbox, then it will do it, wait for the specified number of triggers and automatically 
stop the acquisition. So let's change this to four. And let's see what this looks like on the data side. So now I'm going to start the acquisition. Perception tells me it's waiting for trigger one of four. I'm going to give it a trigger. In this case, just a manual software trigger because I don't have an automation system set up here. I'm going to give it another trigger. Another trigger. And the final trigger. And perception will stop automatically because that's what I ask it to do. And now here's what I see in my data file. So there's trigger one, trigger two, trigger three, and trigger four. Each time I've got one second of data that's been saved. So that's operating in what we would call either mapping mode or sweeps mode. And that brings us to the end of session four of a quick introduction to Perception ePower.